you used to hang out in Austin a little bit. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Um, what brought you to, to Austin originally? Uh, warmer weather than Wisconsin. Yeah. 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 And you, of course, I saw uh, I saw rank and file on Austin city limits, and I, and that was pretty cool. Uh, that was with Alejandro Escobedo. Who owns Austin? I hear now. Almost. Good. <laughs> no, Alejandro's a great guy, and uh, he's uh, he's been playing a lot recently, and that's really cool, yeah. and, and those were the days, huh? Yeah, he owns a trailer that I used to own. <laughs> I, I sold him this trailer, and uh, he hasn't had a chance to use it. It's still sitting on the lot where he bought it like three years ago. Oh. Hilarious. Uh, so, yeah, you know, and you spent some uh, time here in Austin. Was um, this actually... I don't know, Timbuk3 was the first musical project in Austin, but there was some stuff even before that in Wisconsin. Yeah. I think I had that on vinyl somewhere. You I don't did? know if I still do. I got flooded and lost the vinyl. But, did Blaze um, Foley give it to you? <laughs> 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 but, uh, so, give me a little bit about what, how, what made you start playing music, even way back in the day. Oh, my mom played guitar, you know. She, uh, she played, you know, my mom was like 17 when I was born. And, wow. Uh, yeah, and... Uh, she was great when I was growing up. I was just like, you know, oh wow, she plays guitar. And it was like three chords, but she played all this Hank Williams and, uh, you know, Everly Brothers and like, you know, um, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and she taught me like my first three chords. And, uh, but I didn't really get into it until, you know, the British invasion of the you know, Beatles and the Stones and all that. Kinks, man. Oh, kinks. the kinks. I remember, you know, I, I remember we had one of those pieces of furniture that was called a stereo or a hi-fi. Right. And, uh, and, and, and the, the record I remember listening to the most back then was the kinks. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. The Davies brothers that fight like mad. Yeah. Music and fighting. Why does it always go that way? Go good together, I guess, you I know. Guess so. It's a fight to play the music. You've got to fight for your right to... Uh, Party. <laughs> wrote that once. <laughs> right on. So, um, speaking of fighting, um, we all know the story. Timbuk three played with the beatbox and stuff on the streets and stuff. Even well, we you know we did tried it for a minute in Austin. Yeah. Playing on the street, and uh, I remember you know it costed me more for the guitar strings than we made. You yeah. Know? And then I realized we could get these gigs in the bars that were just like one step off the street, and we started <laughs> playing at Maggie Mays and. Uh, you know, all he had to do was get a pretty girl to, to pass the tip jar, yeah. and we had one of those in the band, yep. so uh, it was really convenient, you know. I, I'd, I'd take solo for a while, and Barbara would go out and pass the tip jar, and uh, yeah. I guess vice versa, I don't know. You know let's just say I did it too. You know? <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. It's, it's the right thing to say. Yeah. But we did spend like a week in New York City playing on the street. And somebody approached us and offered us a gig that night at CBGB's. So wow. we actually played C right from the street to CBGB's one day. Amazing. And the rest is history. IRS records and uh, videos and 120 minutes in MTV. And All that kind of Tours shit. and, yeah. yeah. Austin, Texas, blown up. Woo! <laughs> the song that never dies. And uh, it's still treating you well, I'm sure. I get quarterly royalty checks. <laughs> They're, they're not huge, but you know, it <laughs> helps, man. That's right. Everything helps. And you're pursuing the fabulous Pat McDonald solo career for quite a while now. Yeah. What's the official um, story? Why did Timbuk3 break up? Um, I started <laughs> writing songs that my partner didn't really want, wasn't interested in singing that there much, you, you know. And I don't blame her, really. They were kind of depressing. <laughs> hateful, yeah. Hateful. No, she liked the hateful stuff. Oh, cool. <laughs> All good. that political stuff. No, this stuff was kind of uh, uh, more uh, stupid and introspective. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so it goes. It wasn't intelligent and political at all, you know. Hmm. Anyway, no. That's really... I could elaborate. It's sure. right, for TV. It's good to give like short, concise answers, and sometimes they're lies. You know, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it all looks great. Yeah. So um, tell me about is it the Steel Bridge Foundation or what's what what's going on with your? You have something uh, that you're working on in Wisconsin. Oh, great! I'm I'm glad you asked. Yeah. Um, uh, well, my sister has been involved in this. Uh, 
project to save this old steel drawbridge for like about 10 years now and uh, um, people don't really appreciate it up there it's a you know it's kind of a small town and uh, they don't put much value on historic preservation so uh, you know that's her thing and, and I got involved because I just really more wanted to help her out um, and uh, we got Jackson Brown to headline last year and um, we've kind of expanded it this year and it's like a three-day thing now and that's cool man. when's it coming up June 8th 9th and 10th all right David Lindley play with uh, Jackson Brown at that time um no he didn't come Jackson played a solo set oh yeah it was, and uh, but uh, they went to Spain recently and the two of them did a tour of Spain mm -hmm. Jackson and David and, yeah. and uh, I think that was really well received because uh, Lindley's really popular. It's amazing. He's the guy who sang, um, Oh, won't you stay? And that was the big hit in Spain. Exactly. The cool part. Yeah. Exactly. So I saw that on uh, Town Light. El Rayo X opened for Jackson Brown and then David Lindley with Jackson Brown. When was that? That was 1980, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, uh, Aqua Festival? <laughs> yeah. Aqua Festival. You guys played Aqua Festival. Uh, I think, yeah, it might have even been that year. I don't I'm know. Back, Mate, was Lindley playing with? Because I did see Jackson play that, and I remember yeah. he did this great version of Cocaine, and I've always liked his acoustic solo stuff because right it's on. more raw. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Um, Troubadour Stomp. Yeah. Tell me about your new record. Well, I recorded it in Portland, Oregon, where I've been. I've been spending a lot of time there lately, and. Um, I did it with a producer in a studio um, for a change. I had done this CD uh, in the beginning of 2004 called In the Red Room. Mm -hmm. And the Red Room is a bar in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. And I recorded this live thing in one day. And um, basically, that's the latest thing that's out right now. And mm -hmm. you can actually download it on iTunes and a bunch of places, you know. Um, but. Uh, I wanted to do a more studio version of the same thing based on my live thing mm -hmm. and um, and this this is that it's like I gave myself the freedom to overdub a few things you know backing vocals and a little bit of tambourine and shaker on it you know little touches but it's basically the live thing brought into a studio you know cool yeah. Cool. What do you find yourself listening to these days? I think you're on the road driving around, I guess, from place to place playing as much as you do. Man, you know, um, I've done a lot of listening to Eric McFadden, my friend uh, uh, from San Francisco. And uh, he's played on some of my records, and he, he covers a lot of my songs mm -hmm. in his shows. And uh, um, he's like, he's my partner in a little side project we have called Sons of Crack Daniels. Oh, right on. Yeah, I'll give you... Copy I was looking at the Crack Daniels MySpace page. So, oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nine and a half. Nice. Yeah. And I, I do. I listen, you know, he's like, and you know, I've been listening to Chris Whitley a lot since oh, he died, you know. Yeah, man. Um, Very talented. Yeah. You know. Wow. He, he has a new record that's really great. It's yeah. Really, really great. Very cool. You do some interesting covers. Oh, thanks. You know, um, how, is that stuff you listen to, or things that you pick as a cover just to uh, be, I mean, how do you decide? Usually it's stuff I've heard so many times that I know it, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's my, my, my own private karaoke, you know. It's kind of like, uh, I, I don't, I don't know, you know, it's almost accidental. Yeah. Except for the Depe Depeche Mode stuff, I did a whole disc of their stuff, and um, I kind of made a conscious effort to... After I had learned like two or three songs, more out of the love for it and by accident almost, then I kind of consciously thought, eh, what would make a good record? And just learn song after song and did it. Great. it a few years ago. And I still do some of those. Mm -hmm. And so, PJ Harvey. Love uh, PJ yeah. Harvey. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, man, I am excited to hear Pat McDonald jam, so I'm going to shut the hell up. Um, Shut up. This is Capsize, man, and uh, it's uh, very much a pleasure to have Pat McDonald in the house. Thank you so much, man. Big hugs, man. big love, big love, baby. Right so, uh, Pat McDonald right here on Capsize, y'all.